Hello Bitsbrew, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk here and in this video I'm going to show you how I made my entry for the Turnip 28 Spring Mutations Contest. So this is a competition where you um, randomly generate three mutations um, from a rule set that they have provided and basically build, build a miniature to use them mutations and um, there's really not any other rules apart from that really, so you can just go wild and use your imagination. And for me, um, I had a rough idea of what I want, and I'm going to take some 3D printable STL files and sort of mash them together to get the, the basis of my miniature, and then add some extra bits and pieces on top of that, and I'll show you how I do that entire process, and then we'll take a look at the miniature at the end. So yeah, sit back and enjoy. So I'm going to use random.org to generate three numbers, which will be my mutations. So we have 43. 27 and 18 and then I'll go and look them up on the PDF so here it is and I'll scroll down there's some really awesome artwork in this PDF so the first one is root hair so just essentially just some roots instead of hair and that's something I think I'll make myself um, yeah, so look at this artwork, amazing. I really like the guy on stilts. I think I'm going to use something on stilts for my miniature. Um, so we're going down now to 27. That's the Sapper's Axe. So that's a piece of uh, equipment. So just try and make some sort of axe. And then I'm going to scroll down to 43. Muttons, so a little pet. A small cloud of powder smoke in the shape of a rather grumpy lamb. Um, that would be really fun. Maybe I'll find a little lamb to 3D print and make a more sort of smoky. So yeah, that could be quite interesting. So I decided to actually um, ditch the axe because I wanted to have two mutations. Um, we only sort of had the one mutation and then there was like, a weapon and a pet. So, um, so I rolled or well, random generated a number again and got number seven which scrolling all the way up, um, too far, in one of these boxes, we have stomach faced. So yeah, like a face coming out of his stomach, that could be quite cool. So yeah, I'm gonna have that, the lamb, and the root hair. So go on to my mini factory, and I found this miniature from uh, Bestia Aram Miniatures, which is on stilts, and I think it's really cool. I think I'm gonna take the lower half from this guy for sure. Um, this is the Scrap Shaman. He's only $5. So yeah, this sort of area here. And um, $5, that's just amazing. Um, top half I'm going to take from the Lender set. I want something with a big belly. Um, this is from STL Miniatures. Um, I, I've been a member of their Patreon for quite a while. So I already had this in my library. And I'm also a mem member of the Great Grim Grimoire Patreon. And I'm going to take the Swamp Witch and take the Staff and the Hand from that. I mean that does have root hair as well, but I, I want to make my own. I don't want to make, make some stuff on here from scratch as well. I don't want it to be fully 3D printed. And yeah, so first things first is putting this miniature into a 3D builder and just going to split it to take the sort of bottom section, like so. That's what leaves me with this, and then I can use the split tool again to take away some other bits. Now, there's probably much better ways of doing this on some much better software, um, but this is just um, what I know, so I'm sure using more powerful 3D sculpting softwares and stuff, you could probably just remove stuff a lot easier than just using lots of split tools on 3D Builder, but when you're an absolute beginner like me, uh, this is about as easy as it gets, so it takes a little bit of time obviously, getting rid of little bits and pieces. You can insert shapes and just subtract them as well, but um, I find this just a bit quicker. And then that gives us a really nice bottom half. And then oh, chuck in the lender. There he is. And obviously we'll do sort of the opposite of him, we want we want the top, but I quite like his sort of flowing jacket as well. 
So yeah, as I said earlier, you can use shapes, chuck them in, and this works well if you just want to get rid of a section, because the split tool will take sort of quite a lot away. That'd be quite hard to do with this and keep the the jacker. And then you can click on the subtract subtract button, and that will, after a little while, take that chunk away. And then you can just add more and more shapes to get rid of all the legs and whatever else you want to get rid of. And then you'll be left with something like this, which I can then move about and stick on the legs. And the size is actually quite good. I just have to shrink them down just a little bit. Now you can see obviously it's not a clean join by any imagination, but that doesn't matter too much. I can always use some green stuff and whatnot to fill in any gaps, um, but it's not, it's not terrible. And then I'm just going to whack a sphere in to get rid of his head, because I'm going to put a turnip 28 themed head in there for my mutant. So again, we're just subtracting it as normal. So I've just separated them two parts uh, again, and I'm going to insert the Swamp Witch. And again, it's the same process as before, just removing some parts. And it's quite straightforward, just taking the arm off this one. Don't really need any fancy angles too much here. And then I'm left with the arm there. There's a little bit in there, but um, I'll we'll get rid of that later. And just in case of resize on it. And then I'm going to take away a bit of the arm from this torso, of course, and replace it with this one. So just moving it off to the side and Get rid of that, same way as before. And I can attach this on like so. And obviously this arm's a bit slimmer than what he had before and slimmer than the other arm, but he's a mutant, doesn't matter. So yeah, it gives him a bit of support. He's walking on a stilt, so he shouldn't fall off. And then here I'm going to make a hole in his stomach, just so I can put in the mutated face to go in his belly. And I thought putting a hole in there would be the easiest way of doing this. I don't have to drill out anything, or cut away anything. I can just put a hole in his stomach, subtract it out like so, and then, yeah, I'll be able to put a face in there. And I'm going to do that with a miniature, and then maybe some green stuff. So for the head, I'm taking one of the Turnip 28 bodies that you can get on the Patreon. And yeah, I'll add some root hair to that. I'm just going to take away these little bits on the edge. And I chose one with a really long nose. I just really like them. You may have seen me use some in um, other bits and pieces. I did convert some Stormcast heads from these. And let's put that in place like so. And yeah, so that is essentially what's going to be printing out. You'll see um, in this clip I have some like, face in the stomach. I don't actually use that in the end. I do remove that. It's just something I tried. But I didn't like it. So I'll show you what I do in the next clip. So here he is all printed out. And yeah, he came out pretty good. A uh, slight little failure in the back there, but I'll, I'll keep that in. There's a little, little tear or something. That's absolutely fine. Got the hole there for his stomach, so I did find this Chaos Spawn Head. Which, if I cut the horns off, and uh, maybe trim it down a little bit, it might not fit in there, but 
the neck piece fits in pretty well, so I could have it just sticking out um, rather than recessed, which was the original plan, but I quite like how well that sort of sits in there. There's some green stuff around it, make it look like a sort of burst out of the chest. I think that could work. Obviously there's still lots of other bits I want to do as well. We need to do the root hair. I'll print out, well I'm hoping to print out some little turnips which can go hanging off there as well. Maybe some other little vegetables if I can find any or even make some. And of course we need muttons for sheep as well. Which I might have sort of jumping out of his hand maybe. And we shall see. And then I'll also do a base. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how he printed out. Um, if I move the camera, I'll just show you how um, large he is compared to a, another miniature. So here's an old commando. I've been working on them. And you can see he's quite tall. So yeah, quite a nice size. I'm thinking maybe 32 or 40 mil for his base. But yeah, that's something else I'll print out. I think a little, little swamp theme or something like that could be quite cool. But yeah, I'm really happy with how he's turned out. He's printed really well and it's quite difficult to see where all the bits have joined up as well, which is quite nice. Now, of course, one arm is thinner than the other one, but that doesn't matter at all. Mutant, you can get away with so much. And yeah, there's still quite a bit of sort of green stuff work to do, so yeah. So cutting down this head I'm just gonna take these horns off I don't want to be neat or anything I do plan on the green stuff and around the area and let's go around this way let's chop off like so and I'm thinking maybe taking off a bit on the top as well after a bit gradually just want this sort of main bit here, so there's like an eye there, and this big, big eye there, and yeah, so, obviously it's quite a big flat cut on that side, so I'll have to do something about that, um, but yeah, hopefully this will work, I quite like how it's sort of come out of the stomach like that actually, I think I'll cut a lot of this down, so it'll almost be flush so it's not sticking out so much, and then you won't see as much of that flat area either. So I think that's the plan. So yeah, I'll be back once I've done that. Okay, so I'm not good with green stuff at all. And trying to do it on camera will be even harder, but I'm thinking just the idea. Maybe roll some sausages and flatten them out. And then, essentially, just cut them into like sort of tears to make it look like the um, shirt sort of torn open to let the face come out. Um, I have a clay shape around it somewhere to help screw it out. I have no idea where that is. Prepared as always. Here we go. So these things are really cool. Just to flat them out. And then dampen my knife and then hopefully some of the wall off there just be able to cut out sort of tear shapes a bit too much water There's something kind of like that. And then obviously I'll do that all the way around, just um, one sausage at a time. A little bit off. Now let's quickly do another one on camera. And you can see it's quite easy, and um, that's probably too big actually. For someone who has very limited and um, next to no green stuff skills, it's not um, particularly difficult, I suppose. Just 
sort of stretching out. Um, this one's probably not going to be as good actually, it's gone over the face a little bit. And then try and do like a couple of little jagged bits. I'm even sort of just pulling out like that, can get a more sort of natural look. But I think I need to bring that in a bit there. That one's not quite as good. And um, we'll bring that to flat out a bit more. Don't think I had enough green stuff on that particular one, and it's overlapped a bit too much, I think, for my liking. So I'll make it go up that way. So yeah, I'll go around and do some more. That one wasn't particularly great, but it's not too bad. I'll do it all the way around and then I'll be back. So this terribly messy green stuff work is what I've come up with. Um, only it's a bit of a mess up here because I've got bits of green stuff just on the shirt but they're more sort of just stained at green rather than taking away too much detail. Not that you're going to see a lot of detail once I've finished with this mind you. Um, don't really knock to do at the bottom here so I've just got bits sort of hanging out and a little bit there. And you can see I've started doing the root hair, so these are just a few long bits of green stuff. And I'm just sort of adding them on wherever, really. I'll take this one here, stick that one down the middle. And yeah, it's just going to be a case of taking loads of sort of green stuff sausages and having them. Um, it's almost going to be styled in a way. But just made up of these roots, and I'll get some of them. I'm trying to take that apart. Get some of them just sort of going wild in different directions, twisting them together, and all sorts really. Some of them I'll pull on a little bit as well to sort of stretch out the ends, get a bit thinner at the ends. And yeah, I'll see where they'll end up. Um, yeah, it's just trying to work out where they're all going to come from, but maybe I'll just fill up this little gap here with some more. Okay, so this is what I have. Some random roots for his hair. And then I had some spare green stuff that I've just sort of wrapped around his staff. So, yeah, I think that's not too bad for the green stuff work. So before I do anything else on him I'm probably going to get his base sorted and get him on his base and then I just want to add some mud and moss and things like that before I start painting him. And of course um, we need muttons so, and some turnips and stuff so yeah still a fair bit to do. Okay so here's how he's looking now. So a lot has happened off camera as you can see. So I put a sheep on the base. Now obviously it looks a bit cutesy at the moment, so I'll just do something about that. And um, probably mostly with the paint job. You can see he's got mud on him. I used some textured paint. Um I done that last night so I had plenty of time to dry. Also 3D printed out this little sack that I found. Ooh, focus. And yeah, I done some really crappy turnips in there. Um, made from Millie and green stuff. Um, there's, I had to sort of make a bottom of the bag because it was like flat, so I've made it look like it's got like this temporary sort of stitched up bottom. Probably looks a bit rubbish, but <laughs> never mind. Um, nothing here needs to be neat. Uh, it's just attached with a Millie Putt rope. And yeah, I want to dirty him up even further. Uh, let's get an old brush. That'll do. I've got some PVA glue here. And I'm going to add on some bits of static grass. Something that I like to 
do with these turnip minis. Um, got a little bit in the box here. Very old classic Citadel box. A few little bits of static grass. Chuck that on. Yeah, as you can see, I've done the base as well. And that's come out okay. Um, base isn't really a big focus of this miniature. And I've got this stuff as well. This is Summer Undergrowth um, from Army Painter. So these things are very cool, and these will just add some more roots to that hair. I'm not massively digging what I've done with the hair. Just looks like really weird dreadlocks at the moment, but I think sticking some of this on top might really add add something to it. So uh, let's find the brush I just had. There he is. So yeah, I think I'll stick this on. some bits off. Just tear it up a little bit. And yeah, I think I'll do a couple of patches of that. And then what I'll do after a little while when it dries, I'll apply some PVA glue over the top of the stuff to make it go harder as well and he'll be ready to paint so yeah I look on the very day now which I quite like and yeah um, just need to do something with the sheep actually I'm thinking maybe I might use some of this stuff on the sheep so the sheep kind of described as sort of appearing in a sort of cloud of smoke sort of thing and I think maybe applying some of this stuff might help with that. I'll probably add some like bits of cotton wool or something if I can find anything like that. But this could be a good little base as well. And helps with that sort of root vegetable theme. Um This feels so weird compared to like, just, well I mean, you just do space marines or something, you know. I'm sticking undergrowth to a sheep. Yeah, let's stick that on. I can't wait to paint this guy, I really can't. Um, but that's going to have to wait um, till tomorrow for me, because I'm going to have to, like I say, apply some more glue on, on this and make things... Um, go nice and solid before I paint them, but yeah, <laughs> looking forward to it. And here he is, just before the priming stage. So yeah, I took most of that stuff off actually and just replaced it with cotton wool. And that works quite well. I'll let the paint job do the rest on the sheep. And yeah, really happy with how he's turned out. And all the PVA glue is dry now. The pieces are a lot. Um, harder now, make them easier to paint. So I'm not going to show you the painting process on this video. Um, it's very similar to how I sort of paint a lot of my blend jitsu stuff. So we do have a playlist showing off some painting on that. So with the magic of video editing, let's see them all painted up. And here he is. So yeah, you'll see straight away that. Um, I've used a lot of different colours without making them look too bright. So we've got some red, blue and green in there. Got sheep on the base. And yeah, I'm really happy with how, he, how he's turned out. Gone for a really sort of dirty look, of course. Um, it really suits the Turnip 28 theme. And yeah, really happy with the final result. And I've gone for this sort of sickly green colour for his skin and the face coming out of his stomach. And yeah, I really like it. We've got a bag full of turnips there. And I really like how um how it turned out on the bag actually and on the stilts as well. And then here's just a couple of photos of him. 
to finish off the video. So yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's just something really different and really enjoyable. And if you're new to mixing and matching stuff um, in 3D printing software, then hopefully this will give you some help if you intend to do that. Um, but of course there are better ways of doing it. But as I said, um, as an uh, absolute beginner like me, um, this is the best and easiest way that I've found to do it. So yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out, and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon.